Uh, let's not forget, Jules, obviously, he's a world record signing when it comes to the amount of money that PSG paid for him. Two years in, and as we mentioned, of course, missed the Champions League last year, going to miss a massive part of it again this year round. Where do they stand on the value they've got from their investment? Because no doubt we talk about PSG a lot more now that Neymar is there, of course, Mbappe as well. However, when it comes to what they put in, what they're getting out from Neymar? I mean, when they signed him, they didn't think that, or they didn't know, uh, couldn't even obviously dreamed of being without him from February or the end of February last season all to the rest of the season. And then a year later, still being in the same position at the end of January, being without him for 10 weeks, like we said, maybe even more than that, if the, the, the injury on his metatarsal doesn't heal as well as they're hoping he would without surgery. So he could even miss the rest of the season from now on. We, we're not sure. And when you spend that, that money on Neymar, you think that he's not going to get injured and he's not going to miss four months and then maybe another four months next season. That's the, that's, that's the problem. So it's hard to judge his time because in terms of numbers, he's done amazingly well, but he's only played one leg of the last 16 against Real Madrid last season. Wow. And so far this season, he might not ever play at all in the knockout stage of the Champions League. So it, it'd be really hard for them to judge what they spend. But obviously they spend that money for him to be fully fit for the whole season and played in those key matches in the Champions League, which he hasn't been able to do. He also spent a lot of time last summer talking about the possibility that Neymar could leave PSG this year in the fact, obviously, Real Madrid, a lot of talk going on. That surely has completely scuppered all of it, that, that kind of speculation. He's at PSG certainly for the next couple of seasons, isn't he now? Yeah, I think so. We, we, we said, I think, at least two years he was going to stay in Paris. There's always those rumours in Spain, like, like when Frankie de Jong, for example, signed for Barcelona only a few weeks ago. Uh, people at the club were showing him the WhatsApp messages they received from Neymar saying that he wanted to come back at Barcelona, that he wanted to play there next season. You know, all of that. We know that Real Madrid have somewhere some plans to recruit him at some point or make an offer at least at some point in the next few years. I'm not sure when that will happen because, as we said, he's 27 already. But potentially, he, you know, they will come for him, both of those clubs. And I believe they're the only two who can afford him and the only two where he probably would want to go at some point from PSG. Will it, be in, will it be this summer coming? I'm not so sure. Again, it all depends on his fitness and how that injury evolves. It also depends on how he finishes the season with Paris, if he mm. does finish it, and if he does play again. But I think there will always be a lot of speculation around him. And the fact that those clubs still want him, at least at some point, shows what a talent he is. Because if you're ready to pay 300 or 350 million euros for someone, it's because you believe he's worth it. We know then he won't be involved in those two legs against Manchester United. PSG, though, big favourites. Uh, Jules, let's start, shall we? Now we've got... This time next week, we'll actually be talking about the game. I feel like we've been doing it forever. Um, you take a look at the, the probable <laughs> starting eleven. You've got Verratti starting in midfield. And, of course, midfield is where all the talk is going to be over the next few days about how PSG are going to set up. That's a massive risk, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. He started training uh, back with the team yesterday and people at the club, Thomas Tuchel in the first place, believe that that's enough time between uh, yesterday, Monday, until next week for him to be ready to play that first leg. Like you said, there's a, there's a huge problem. There's, there's a huge deficit in midfield of, of players of his talent, of his calibre. We saw against Lyon on Sunday with PSG lost for the first time in the league that they miss him. They miss his creativity from midfield. And because Leandro Paredes, the new signing from Zenit, the Argentine, again, might not be ready, completely ready to play, you know, fitness-wise, but also in terms of knowing the rest mm -hmm. of the team and, and what Tuchel wants, how he wants to play might not be ready to start either. I think they will take the risk and the gamble to start Verratti alongside Marquinhos in that midfield. I do not, Jules, that uh, Rabiot is still in the Champions League squad. Is that, is that dead in the water for him, getting any involvement? So he is, Craig, and that's, the, that's another big debate for, for Tuchel. Tuchel has accepted the decision by the club to, to freeze him out. However, he wants him back in his squad and it's a bit of a battle between Tuchel and Antero Enrique, the sporting director, but also Nasser El Khalaifi, the, the chairman, about Rabiot. Tuchel wants him. He said, I need him. Look, look at my squad. Look at my midfielders. I need him there. It's an option. It's a valuable option before a game like the one against United. And at the moment, they're still saying, no, 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 he doesn't want to renew his contract. He doesn't want to sign a new one. So he has to, say, he has to stay aside. 
And if, if, if Tuchel manages to win this battle, and it would be a small victory for him, but a huge victory for him in the same, in the same way as well, then I think they have a better chance to, to knock out United. If he has to do without Rabiot, and that's what looks likely at the moment, I think he, it will still be a big blow for the team. You ever heard that answer stupid in all your life? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> you know what saying, throwing the baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. This is just everything going out here, Completely. right out the window. Particularly when the, 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 oh, the major problems that you've got on your team are in the middle of the park. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like, almost like the, a big kid who doesn't get the candy that he wants and just crying in the corner because a player wants to leave. And yet your ultimate goal is to win the Champions League for the first time. And, you, <laughs> and it's, now a, it's now a battle between owners and sporting directors and coaches. <laughs> it's bonkers.